All right, guys. So, welcome to another uh, episode here. We're going to show you uh, how I do uh, correction on something like a door here. Um, the S2000 has relatively soft paint, so it is a lot faster to correct a door uh, or a panel with this composition of paint versus maybe a Porsche or an Audi. Uh, it just depends on the tools that you're using and the techniques and chemicals, so on and so forth. So I'm going to pick the camera up and show you guys the condition of the door. So you can see, very swirled up. Put this down here, give you guys an idea of what the door looks like. Pretty bad, right? The whole car pretty much looked like that. But this is the last panel that I have to do, so I figured I'd do the, the video on, uh, on this panel here since it's kind of the most flat and the biggest panel. So the two tools that I'm going to be using uh, are the 75E with a Lake Country microfiber pad and the Mark II 15 Lake Country purple foamed wool pad. Uh, and the chemicals that I'm going to be using is, I'm also, well, sorry, also I'm going to be using the, uh, the Lake Country CCS black finishing pad with Essence, Car Pro Essence, which I have uh, right here, big 32 ouncer, and then I got M110 to cut with. Always remember, um, if you're going to be doing something like this to uh, wear your PPE, the dust from these is not going to breathe in. It's got a lot of aluminum oxide in it, so yeah. Recently I just started really focusing on wearing some sort of a dust mask and uh, this being probably the best one that you can use. Uh, also, having good sources of light. I've got my head here, the Lake Country, sorry, Lake Country, uh, the uh, Scan Grip uh, headlamp, second generation, and then the Astro Pneumatic uh, paint match light. And yeah, so I'm going to show you guys how I do this. It's really easy. First and foremost, always make sure that you are working with a clean panel. Uh, brush all the dust off, anything like that, and then uh, make sure that your pads are also clean and in good condition. These are both relatively new pads. This one I'm probably going to throw out after just because uh, I'm starting to see the uh, fibers are shortening, so the cutting is becoming less effective. Uh, luckily, the paint's very forgiving and soft, so you don't have to really worry about having hard cutting capabilities. All right. So like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with the perimeter. Around the mirror, around the door, uh, all the, the edges uh, where the bigger pad may lack the strength. Around the door handle and the actual door handle itself. And all the way down here. And then these, this section, the skirt or the rocker, um, we will take care of with the uh, 75 and the big guy. Uh, and I do it in a different way. I won't be doing this on video. I'm just going to be doing the door panel, the outside uh, skin here, from this edge all the way up to the top here. Relatively easy to do and easy to understand. So uh, what I like to do is use my headlamp from basically the middle section up and then I'll use my handheld for the rest of the door. Um, you want to be careful that you're not having too much light pollution. Uh, black absorbs a lot of light and too much light can actually actually bleach out a lot of defects and I've seen it happen especially if the lights are too bright. That's why a scan grip floodlight is really really important because it's not overwhelmingly bright but it uh, allows the, the paint to absorb just the right amount of light to show you all of the defects. So I'm just going to get started here, working from the top of the door, down, and taking your time. That's the most important thing here.
Now it's important to note that in a lot of high-end corrections, normally I would remove the mirror so that way I can get the entirety of the door panel, the section behind the mirror, which would be done by hand. Uh, because this is a budgeted job, I'm not taking off the mirrors, and it is kind of a pain in the ass to take mirrors off of this car. I wish it was more like an older car where it's a little easier. You do have to take the entire door part off to get the mirror out off the panel. So the time just didn't allow it, so we're not going to be doing it. Um, you don't have to worry about being too precise. Uh, the big machine will kind of blend everything out once we go over it. But it's important to make sure that you get the edges first. That's why I always start with the edges. Oh, keep going. So, I'm going to be moving. I'm going to be moving gradually. And I trust the machine and I trust the level of cut that I'm getting, so I don't necessarily always inspect what I'm doing. Uh, I wait until I'm kind of at that secondary cutting step, and then I go back and look and see if I've missed anything. And chances are I haven't with paint like this, but it's always good to double check your work. It's important to note that I can see if I've removed defects through the polish. Uh, I've done this so long that it's really not hard for me anymore to kind of decipher how much work that I have done. Um, some people may question that, but trust me, it is not complicated in any way to be able to, I mean, if your eyes suck, then it's a different story. My eyes are pretty good, so. section I have left is the upper door here uh, and then uh, we're going to move on to the body of the door just making sure this thing's still recording <laughs> so what does help with this is having a stool I hate sitting on the floor because it fucks my back up so get yourself a stool Uh, M110 is a great product because it's a, it's a very slow breaking down type polish and it does have long, long working cycles even with rotaries uh, but it's even more with uh, dual actions. Switch to the 20 or the 15. I'm going to do the same thing slow passes, decent amount of product, work in small sections. All right? You don't have to overcomplicate things, okay? So, one thing I want to mention is a lot of guys who do demonstration videos on YouTube. They do the four dots on the pad, they do, you know, they get real close, they put their heads right up to the panel, and they inspect the panel, and what you're really doing is, is showing off. You're not really actually teaching people things. 
and there, there's no point in showing off, right? You can't see defects when you're going like this to the paint. It doesn't help. You actually tend to see better when you stand back and look at the paint and you inspect it from a distance with a good inspection light. You can tell just how much work you've done and just how much work you haven't done. When you're up really close to the paint, your focal range is very small. So you're not really seeing the big picture, if you know what I'm saying. So anybody who's sitting there with, you know, a coating applicator doing like perfect fucking cross hatches and shit, like I get it, there's a there's a technique to it, but you don't have to do it that way. And those people are they're just trying to make it seem like it's more difficult to do what they're actually doing. It's really no different than putting wax on the car. You put it on, you take it off. There's just a longer process. And yes, some skill is required, but that's only if you mess up and have to take it off after it's cured. Anyway. Another thing that's really important to mention is to overlap over what you did on the edges with the big machine. The little machine tends to leave a lot of residue, doesn't really cook it off as well as this Lake Country pad does, and it allows you to see even more of what you may have missed. And this does leave a fair amount of, so I can see some deep scratches here, it, it even leaves a fair amount of haze, but you can see through that haze, and that's what's really, really good. So what I'm gonna do is put this uh, Astro light right there so I can see what I'm doing. And I can see that there are quite a bit of holograms still in there. Uh, the defects are pretty deep on this car, so we, we've got to operate in excess. is to go over your areas twice, no matter what. Some people may say not to. I say go over your areas that you've polished two times. Doesn't hurt, unless the car is really sensitive and has no paint on it. This car's got plenty of paint, so two times. Residue off doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want to be uh, working compound with the polish, otherwise you get mixed mixed results. So I'm going to take you in here, show you. you get a much cleaner result. I think I got the low beam on, right? Yep. All right. So much cleaner result. You've got some haze, but you I don't see any really deep marks and you won't really see them in clear depth until you polish the car and then <laughs> what I like to do is after I polish the panel and get it refined as good as I can I'll go and find those deep defects and then hit them with the small polisher again to just isolate deeper defect removal so I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the um, Lake Country pad now Essence. 
we don't have to use the three incher for this. You certainly can if you want. I can articulate this machine pretty well. So I don't necessarily always need to switch to a smaller machine, but if I need to, I will. I'm also using medium pressure with 110. I'm not really going too ham bone on it, but it's important to have some sort of regulation. You don't want it going super hard all the time. I mean, it's very soft on this car, so you just need to be conscious of what you're doing. And this is really easy, but you have to do a lot of repeat repetitive passes. Yes, this product does fill a tiny bit, but if you work it enough and you use post wipe, you keep working it so you don't see anything coming back. On paint like this, I'm not really worried about it filling too much. Uh, I've done several passes and wiped it with pre coat, and it doesn't reveal any micromarin, so that tells me it's doing its job. section, do several passes, wipe it down. All right, like I said, you always do your section twice. And you don't have to add more product. You can if you want. I'm not going to. Uh, it looks pretty refined from what I'm sitting, but I always go over it twice. <laughs> I'm keeping this recording with no editing because I want you guys to see real time how I do this. Now, because this is such soft paint, the only true way to get this paint to finish down perfectly every time is to use slower and slower speeds. I'm seeing some residue kind of burning itself into the paint, which is really normal. But overall, from back here, the paint looks really good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce our speed by just a, down to about four. I operate on, on five and a half, six all the time, and I'm gonna add like a really tiny dot of essence, just a ever so slight that of essence. That's kind of like your jeweling step. You know, I'm just showing you guys how I do a section and I'll end it and then show you guys what the door looks like after. Now that's much, much better. Much better. There's some deep scratches I see. There's like one going across, but it's really not that bad in comparison to what it was before. So we'll take the camera here. And you can see, minus the fogging on my lens, the difference between cut side, finished side. I should have left a control spot, but um, I am trying not to get the light in the camera here, but that is pretty good, pretty refined. Now we haven't wiped it yet. So I'm gonna grab some body solvent and wipe it. So we'll just do a couple sprays there. Working in circles, up and down, left and right, whatever. Flip it, buff it off. Right 
rotate the towel, buff it again. Not seeing any micro marring, which is really nice. So let's get our Astro light again. And same result. I'll bring you in even closer. Might have a tiny bit of micro marring from the body solvent, which sucks with these softer paints. Kind of can't help it, but. Much cleaner, much better, more refined. So unfortunately, because it is soft paint, it's really hard to avoid those uh, micro marring effects that you get with uh, solvents or any type of uh, alcohol-based uh, or solvent-based uh, panel prep. So the best way to do it is to water it down and just wipe the panel multiple times with clean rags that don't have any residue on them. I find that that's the best way to do it. Again, cut, finished, right? And there's no micro marring in the paint from the machine. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much how it's done. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the panel and show you guys the panel finished out. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So unfortunately, I, I uh, lost the video of the panel being finished out and didn't realize it till just now, but that's okay because I still have the car in my shop. And um, pretty much what you saw is the finished result in the door is what the whole car looks like, which is really nice. And, uh, and yeah, so I hope you guys learned something from the video. And uh, I'd like to thank you for taking your time watching this lengthy video. Uh, and uh, there'll be uh, some more uh, content to come, guys. Take care.